and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Peter Yorski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. Um, and in this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at our Drupal 7 site and creating a feeds list, just like in Facebook, which will identify all your uh, recent site activity. Um, and we're going to do that based upon the activity module. Uh, so first things first, let's go over to drupal.org slash project slash activity. And I've already downloaded the activity module and installed it, but uh, this is where you would come to get it. And you'll notice the 7 version is still in development. And that's okay. Uh, we can still use it, but there are some bugs to be ironed out. Uh, so uh, if you're using it and you run into things, make sure to use the issue queue, report them. Um, I'm going to try to help out with some patches uh, if they come up. And um, the, the module does say it's currently under maintenance, but uh, there is some activity on it and there are some people helping out. So uh, if you're going to use it, just keep that in mind. Um, and I mean, again, we'll make things better. The other thing that you have to download for this uh, is token module. And it's not actually uh, required by the activity module. And you'll see that when we go to enable it, but this is definitely a good to have. So make sure you head over to project slash token and grab the Drupal 7 version uh, and get that installed as well. So let's head back to our website and we'll go ahead and we'll enable, uh, I'll show you what we have to enable in terms of modules. So we're gonna scroll down and the activity module is actually based upon triggers, uh, and triggers are included in Drupal core. Um, if you're familiar with actions and triggers, that's great. If not, essentially what it is is uh, different times throughout your site, there will be hooks that are fired, so if a user is created, if a node's um, created, that kind of thing. Um, and those are actual triggers, and then based upon those, you can create some actions, so your site will do certain things, and that's what activity module does, is it creates some actions for your site. So I've gone ahead and enabled activity and activity comments. Um, the other thing that you'll have to uh, enable, is just do a quick search for it, is token. So underneath other you'll see that I've got token here um, and that's what's going to allow us to add in usernames, uh, links to pages and that kind of thing in our activity. So you just scroll down, going to hit save, I've already done that. And once you do that, we're then going to go up to our structure activity templates and we're going to go create. And this is actually where you create um, your different actions. So one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a user login. So I have to name this. So anytime a user logs into my site, uh, I'm going to add that to my activity module. So it can be anonymous users, authenticated users, and I'll just show you this. I don't want users to be logging out, logging in, logging out, logging in. So I'm going to uh, make sure that there's a 10 minute uh, interval between uh, their messaging coming up. So now we have, if a user is logged in, this is what the message they're gonna see. So let's go ahead and this is what I was talking about before. These are the tokens. If you don't have token module uh, installed, you're not gonna see this box. Uh, so that's it, so that's an issue. Uh, then you'd just be getting generic, uh, generic things there. So let's go ahead and we'll say username just logged in and we actually want to have the current date so let's take a look at that um, let's go ahead with the long date here you go long date dash current user just logged in and we'll keep it same thing for our public message. So now we're just going to go ahead and save that. Okay. So that's all good. Now what we're going to do is go back to the home page, log out. Suppose I could have done that from the other page. And we're going to go ahead and log in. Now you're going to notice here that we've got two errors. Uh, and this is a result of using a development module. What this is, uh, we'll head back over to activity, we'll take a look at all the open issues, and you'll see here, issue 1199578. This actually addresses that issue, and you can install the patch, it's pretty simple, uh, I'll just show you. There, in the module, they're actually using the account, um, and if you're, again, you're familiar with action triggers, you wanna be using the user. So, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this file, Activity action handlers .inc. It's in the uh, it's in the module root. You're gonna go to this, uh, line seven seven four, and rather than account, type in user. Go ahead and save that. Close that up now, and we'll log out. 
and we'll go ahead and we'll log in. Now, activity module, so that's gone ahead and it's saved our activity. What I should have shown you is the activity module actually creates a number of views. So if you go to structure views, again, this is somewhat of a dependency, so it doesn't list it in the modules, but you're gonna to wanna to have views installed in your site. Sorry, I should have mentioned that before. But you'll see here, one view that's created is all activity, the other is activity branch controls. So if we go to our site slash activity slash all, we see that Tuesday, November 8th, 2011 at 9.14, you were just logged in, right? That was the message that we created. Now, if we go back, let's add one for logging out. And we'll add those, and we don't want to see it for every 10 minutes. And we're going to go back, grab the long date, we're going to go to the current user, actually, name, there we go. And we'll go ahead and we'll save that. And we'll create one more. And on this one, let's go ahead and we'll say user registers. User registration, perfect. And we're actually gonna create a link to the user on this one. So well, that's good. Uh, unlimited users can only register the once, so that's not a problem. And go with those. And here, we're gonna want our current date. Um, same thing there, I guess it doesn't matter. And now what we're gonna want is the activity profile link. So we'll go ahead and we'll click that. And it's just registered. So we'll just copy that, paste it here. Save and create. Right now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to log out. And we'll create a new account. So we'll grab John, John and John.com. And you'll notice we get another error here. Again, if we head back over to the issue queue. We are going to go to version 7.x search. And you'll see here, uh, so again, we have another issue where we have to add uh, uh, ampersand. So we're gonna go ahead and do that in the activity.module. So if I go to activity.module, just open up with edit, and let's just see. I'm just gonna copy this to find the function. Sure enough, no ampersand. Go ahead, add that, hit save, close that up. We'll go back to our site. And we'll create Paul at Paul. This might still give us the error because we might have to update our theme registry. Great, so we're good to go. Now if we go to activity slash all, and we didn't have to update our theme registry, you'll see here we had our logout message, and now we had Paul just registered. And we can go ahead and click on Paul. And we're denied because we don't actually have the ability to look at uh, user accounts. So if I actually switch over to uh, the super user and just to prove to you that it works, click on Paul, permissions, we can look at this person's account and we now have that link. So to take this video tutorial one step further and to finish it off, we're gonna create our activity page as our actual front page. So right now we have activity all, let's go ahead and edit that. So rather than activity all, 
I'm going to say this is home. Go ahead and apply. I'm going to go to home, and I'm not sure if we have it set up already. Nope, didn't think we did. So now I have to go to configuration, site information. Rather than node, that's going to be home. Save configuration. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's go back, make sure that we saved our view. We didn't save our view. Can go ahead and save. Right. So now if we go ahead and hit save, we go back to our home page. And your home page is actually a list of all your activities. Uh, so that's it. That's the video tutorial. Uh, this is probably going to be video tutorial one of two. I'm going to do a second one that's going to show you how to create custom um, custom activities. So you saw that we only had node and user in there. Uh, if you've read Pro Drupal Development, you'll know that uh, one of the chapters goes to show you how to create some annota annotations on uh, on a specific node that only a user can access. So we'll take a look at creating those and identifying them in the activity list here. So if somebody created a specific annotation, it would say that. Um, and that's one way of doing custom activities. So check back if you're interested in that. Please let me know. Additionally, also found out that uh, just noticed the other day, Mustard Seed Media has created a premium Drupal video tutorial uh, on actually creating a social uh, networking site. Uh, it's based on Drupal 6, but if you're interested, I would recommend uh, Bob's site. Um, he does a lot of quality stuff. I've checked out a lot of his video tutorials and he's the reason why I started doing mine. Uh, I haven't seen his premium video tutorial, so I can't speak to it, but he does have great content. So I would recommend you check that out. Uh, so that's it for today. Please leave a comment. Let me know if this is helping you out and we'll see you for the next video tutorial.